From adaptive cruise control to lane keeping assistance or even lane change assistance, most modern vehicles come with some kind of advanced driver assistance system. Those systems vary dramatically from systems that will kinda sorta keep you in your lane or at least shout at you if you depart from it without a turn signal on, to systems that will rigidly enforce being slap, bang in the middle of the lane and damn the consequences, to systems that feel so comfortable and safe it makes you think you could maybe just let go. But could you take the system in your car and upgrade it and indeed make driving long distances a much less demanding experience? But before we talk about that, a little reminder to hit like, subscribe and click that notification bell. And if you'd like, consider supporting us from just $1 a month. I'll tell you how at the end. As long-time viewers will know, we've covered a variety of driver assistance systems over the years, and we've got a video in the pipeline comparing vanilla Tesla Autopilot to Ford's Blue Cruise system. And when we compared those two, we were on a road trip down to San Diego to experience Comma.ai's system. We had an extensive chat with Comma.ai back then, and I got to have a brief test ride in a car equipped with its newest Comma 3 unit. But both then, and when we covered Comma.ai's Comma Con, we saw things in the comments. There were a vocal contingent of people who informed us that we should just buy a Tesla and use autopilot. And then there was a cadre of folks who expressed distress that we didn't have a comma unit on test. Comma.ai is a small and very cost conscious company, and so comma don't dole out $2,000 or even $1,000 worth of equipment for the older comma 2 unit, to reviewers, especially since installing it is a bit of a faff. But then lurking in the inbox one day was a message from a lovely viewer who was not using their comma 2 and offered it to us for our use. They asked to remain anonymous, but you know who you are, so thank you. And that means we've got a comma 2 we're putting through its paces. Today we're going to cover the installation process and some of my first impressions since it's in my car. We were going to test it on the run to Las Vegas for CES, but you'll know how that went down. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, because this did not go entirely smoothly, it should be noted that this comma unit had been sat on the shelf for a very long time. And when I started the install process, the 2019 Kia Niro EV that I drive was not listed as a supported vehicle. So the challenges we had along the way are more related to that than as far as I'm aware, any typical problem you'll see with comma.ai's units or install process for supported cars. The other really important thing to remember is that comma system occupies the same kind of hinterland that Tesla's FSD package does at the moment. For a long time, Comma described its users as taking part in a research project, and out of the box the only functionality the Comma units have is being a dash cam. To use other features requires installing extra software in a process that we'll come back to. The first thing to do if you're considering a Comma unit is to check if your car is on the list of supported vehicles. Now, like I mentioned, my Kia Nero EV wasn't. It is now, thanks to the team at Comma and some input about which connectors the 2019 has and some setting stuff that I tested, but when I started installing, the 2020 model year was supported. Now, I assumed that it would probably be fairly trivial to get it working, and while that did turn out to be the case, because the 2019 and 2020 Nero EVs are very, very similar, there were some differences that tripped me up, and as I'll explain, getting it actually working is something that took a little bit longer. So that definitely is not something to take for granted. Just because one year is supported and another year isn't yet on the list, don't assume that getting it working will be easy. So when you open the box, emblazoned on the inside is the encouragement to go to comma.ai slash setup where you'll find some fairly brief install videos. The first step for which is to install the harness. When you order a comma, either a 3 or a 2, you need to order the specific harness that connects the unit to your car. That harness has specific connectors, which is where I first ran into trouble. I stuck the clip to the windscreen that holds the comma unit and then having removed and yes, broken off part of the mirror surround, which in the Nero EV covers the camera, I quickly realised that the connector in the car did not match the harness. And that's because the car wasn't supported by Comma, and Kia, for reasons known only to themselves, changed the connector. Apparently Hyundai Kia does that a lot. 
Comet does have a massive list of known connector types, and having identified the right connector, I return my harness for a new one with the correct connector, which clicked right into place. That harness also contains a relay, so if the comma unit isn't connected, switched on, or fails, it returns the car to its stock ADAS system. Once that harness was in, I just had to run the cable, which draws power from the OBD2 port. That's all it's actually taking from the diagnostic port, so while I did originally run the cable and supplied power connector directly into the port, I eventually modified it because I have a better route planner that I use and that's connected to an OBD2 dongle, so my car is set up with an OBD2 splitter cable to allow both the comma unit and the OBD2 dongle to be installed simultaneously. All in, it probably took me a couple of hours to get the system physically installed. And after that is where I ran into the issue with picking up an old, unused unit. The firmware installed on the unit was so old it failed to install the current comma software. It would just hang mid-install process. The folks on the comma discord were very helpful in pointing me to a guide on how to put the comma unit into a safe mode where you can upgrade the firmware from a laptop. I'm not going to go into the whole process here, but it needed some playing on the command line using brew and installing Android tools. Once the firmware was upgraded, installing the OpenPilot software was a breeze. Connect it to your Wi-Fi and just type in the path on the screen. Unfortunately, because the 2019 Nero EV wasn't supported at the time, that's where I next ran into problems. Each car generates a fingerprint that's used to identify the make and model. If the comma doesn't know what car it's talking to, then it won't let you force it for obvious safety reasons. While someone did point me to a link for the process for fingerprinting and identifying your car, it is a little bit fiddly. Actually, Chris from Comma did this step from me while I was flying to go and drive the Ionic 5, a process that meant that when I got back from the flight, the Comma unit was able to successfully identify the car. Of course, it's never quite that simple because performance is tuned specifically to each model and during those first few drives, it became apparent that Comma with the stock settings was struggling to get the car around corners at freeway speeds. It would flash warnings saying that it was nearing its torque limit. With, again, some help from Chris at Comma, the settings for the 19 Nero EV were tweaked and the car started performing much better. Okay, so let's hop in the car now and have a quick look at how it's been performing. All right, so you're driving along uh, and you want to engage your Comma unit. Um, my car is already set so the cruise control is enabled. I hit go um, and the car is keeping itself centered in the middle of the lane. And we should talk a bit about what OpenPilot is doing and isn't doing right now. So there are three modes at the moment. There is the traditional mode, which will highlight lane lines and then position the car based on the lane lines. There is um, a mode called laneless, which is the mode that I'm in, where the car just has learned where it should be on the road and it will position itself left to right, so laterally, on the road. The longitudinal one, so how far we are from the car in front, how fast we're going, that is still being handled by the car's underlying, its original cruise control system. But the road position, so where we are sat left to right, that is entirely being handled by OpenPilot. On screen you have this little green surround here that tells you that OpenPilot is engaged. Uh, it will flash amber if you start nearing the torque limit, so how hard it can steer, and it will tell you if you need to take control as well. So one of the things I've frequently experienced with driver assistance systems is that when you approach merges, where a, a either merges or exits, where the road markings no longer are present, like this one that we're just coming up to, then what will happen usually with with the Kia standard mode enabled is the car will wander it will wander right trying to position itself roughly in the middle of that lane similarly if you have lanes which get very wide briefly for some reason the car will wander trying to be in the middle and you don't get that with open pilot or at least very little so we have a, a exit here on the right and the car is staying really nicely centered in the lane that you're actually driving down. 
There's a couple of junctions I have where it does wander a bit depending on the light level, but a little nudge will put you back on course and then it will actually follow the course that you set. The other thing that I'm going to just show you, there's just waiting for a bit of space. Um, oh, here's a good challenge for it. Okay, we're going to change lane here on a curve. And that's fine. And then let's change lane back again. And back. And one of the things that I find really interesting, each lane change is different. It's very human-like, disconcertingly so. So with this system enabled, I have traveled 25, 30 miles. I mean, my regular commute is 25. And all I have done is touch the steering wheel and turn the indicators on to do a lane change. That obviously was dependent on there being a car ahead of me. When there isn't a car ahead of me, you have to use the cruise control to adjust the speed. The other thing to be aware of is that the comma unit does driver monitoring. So if I choose to look away, keep your eyes on the road. There you go. All right. It will tell you not to look away. It can feel so competent that it's easy to forget you need to be doing things. So since this is reliant on the car's own adaptive cruise control, it doesn't really do anything with regard to, say, a driver merging in. You need to be backing off and slowing down yourself because the system isn't going to do that unless your car manages good cut-in detection. Whether the open pilot will handle that better is something that I'm really interested to see. Certainly in my little experience with the Comma 3 unit down in San Diego, it did seem to be a little aggressive, but it certainly was to some extent doing cut-in detection, which is nice. Uh, it'd be nicer if it was a little less aggressive, but then maybe I'm just not that an aggressive a driver. Yeah, that seems unlikely to be true. And there are some of you for whom a system, system like this is not going to be particularly useful. But for us doing long journeys, just like I feel less tired driving an EV than I do driving a gas car, you have less noise and so on, with the cognitive load required for those minor little corrections that you have to make continuously to keep a car in the middle of the lane taken away, I find I'm less tired driving with this. I mean, at this point, I've racked up about 700 miles driving using this system, and it has only tried to kill me a few times, which frankly is pretty good going considering the number of times that several other systems have had a good stab at killing me. The reason that we haven't reviewed this though at this point is because with the next version of the software, I'm told that they will be enabling end-to-end -end longitudinal for this vehicle, in fact for every vehicle, as an option that I can just set. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll be back with more soon. If you have questions about the comma unit or self-driving, go ahead and drop them in the comments below or pop your question in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link below. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a little tickle with your mouse to make sure that you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bodor, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Rajin Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, 
Ellery Hensley, and there's someone else. Oh, Ian! Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links below. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!